Hi, I'm Professor Joe Bolduc, and today I'm going to talk about a specific phylum of fungi known as the Basidiomycota. Members of this phylum are the typically the mushrooms, puffballs, rusts, smuts, and stinkhorns. The Basidiomycota are just one of many phylums that are comprised of the fungi. And as you can see from this slide, that the Basidiomycota phylum is closely related to that of the Ascomycota. So what makes the Basidiomycota different from all the other fungi? First of all, the majority of the members of this phylum are edible, with a few exceptions where there are some mushrooms that have to, that secrete toxins, which prove to be lethal for, for animals and plants. Another major difference is how they grow and replicate. So let's begin with a single spore. A spore is a single cell that has one copy of every chromosome. So it's what we call haploid. Fungi use spores as a way of dispersing cells so that fungi can grow in different places so that they can seek nutrients. These spores will then germinate. That means that they will grow a filament of multi-cells. Multi we call these hyphae. These hyphae will also be haploid. In addition, each cell that are generated from these hyphae will be walled off by a septum. So we're going to say that these hyphae are septated. Now what happens as these hyphae grow, they form these long branched filaments. They tend to come in contact with hyphae from that hyphae that generated from spores of the opposite mating pair. So in the fungi world, we call these spores as plus spore and minus spore. When two hyphae of the opposite mating pair come close together, their cell membranes fuse together and they form a single cell that now contains two haploid nuclei. We call this process plasmogamy. This resulting pink cell will continue to grow and replicate and form hyphae made of cells that have two haploid nuclei. Whereas the green and blue hyphae will continue to make more cells, uh, more hyphae composed of cells that have one haploid nuclei. All these hyphae come together to form an intricate network of hyphae that we call a mycelium. So how do we get a mushroom from this network of mycelium? Here's a picture of a mushroom that was growing in my backyard. And so if I overlay the network of hyphae over this mushroom, this is what I would get. I would start out with a, an opposing mating spore in green. It would form a network of green hyphae. Likewise, I would have a, an opposite mating pair, an, I'm sorry, an opposite mating spore in blue, which would germinate into a network of blue hyphae, where the blue and green hyphae come together by plasmogamy, we would form a network of pink hyphae. So if I go ahead and remove this background of this mushroom, I'm left with that the mycelium, the network of hyphae. As you notice around the stem that you have a group of either the green and blue and the pink hyphae. I'm going to concentrate more on the pink hyphae because this is where we're going to make sexual spores. So as we migrate up the stem of the mushroom and into the cap of the mushroom, each cell of that my, of the hyphae of the pink hyphae have two haploid nuclei. Up until they get to the very end, and this is where we're going to have a process called karyogamy. These two haploid nuclei are going to fuse together to form a single diploid nucleus. Up to this point, every single cell, including the spore and the hyphae cells, uh, had a nuclei or a nucleus that composed of one copy of chromosomes, so they were haploid. Up to the very end, underneath the cap, where the final cell shown here is the basidium, the two nuclei will, for, will fuse together to form a single nucleus that has two copies of every, of every chromosome. So now this nucleus is diploid. Now if that basidium undergoes two rounds of meiosis, as I'm showing you over here as an example, it's going to germinate four sexual spores that are back to haploid. We're going to call those sexual spores basidiospores. Okay, so I want to talk to, to you more about those basidiospores. But first, 
Let's take a picture of a mushroom. So here's another mushroom that was growing in my backyard. I tipped over the cap and I found underneath a series of gills. Now, if we look at those gills, if we magnify those gills, you can see that they are a pair of almost looks like microvilli inside of our intestines. They are basically these very long surfaces. And on the outsides of these surfaces, you're going to find a network of hyphae with the basidium sticking out. And this basidium actually underwent two rounds of meiosis. So it is it has formed the haploid basidiospores sticking out. So the basidiospores would be lining underneath the cap along the edges of these gills. Now, if you were to shake the cap of this mushroom, these basidiospores would fall to the ground, or if there's a light breeze or an insect or an animal is walking by and disturbs this mushroom, these basidiospores are gonna be transported through the air because they're light and will land elsewhere on the ground and then start germinating, germinating, just like I've shown you here with the original green spore and the opposite mating spore, this blue spore. And the whole process would begin. Now we call this basidiospore a sexual spore because it exchanged DNA from, or it combined the DNA from both the green positive spore and the blue minus spore. Now that's not the only way in which they replicate. Another way is by asexual reproduction. And in this case, I've shown you here fragmented hyphae. So the hyphae that are in the ground uh, could sometimes just break apart. For instance, if you go around and pick mushrooms off the ground, what's left behind are these hyphae. And so in essence, you fragmented those hyphae. Or just by natural disturbance, these hyphae can break apart and germinate into other strands of mycelium. And as long as they can come close enough to the hyphae of an opposite opposite mating uh, hyphae or spore, uh, they will then again undergo plasmogamy, karyogamy, meiosis. They will form another mushroom, etc., etc. So the cycle begins all over again. So what I've just done is I've explained the reproductive cycle of a basidiomycota using the mushroom as an example. However, this holds true for all the other members of the basidiomycota, including the puffballs, the rusts, the smuts and the stinkhorns. Specifically, they can replicate by sexual spores called the basidiospores or by fragmented hyphae, which is the asexual type of spore in this case. The terms that I've told you included the term plasmogamy, which occurred in the stem of the mushroom, where two mycelium, I should say two haploid of opposing mating spores fused together generate a single cell that had two haploid nuclei. As the resulting hyphae uh, resulted, as it grew up into the stem and to the cap of the mushroom, a specialized hyphae uh, formed into a basidium. The basidium was a cell that contained the two fused nuclei, so it has one nucleus that is now diploid. This diploid nuclei underwent two rounds of meiosis to form the basidiospores, which are back into being haploid again. I also mentioned that these fungi are multicellular and that they are made out of a network of hyphae called mycelium and that the hyphae are septated, meaning that they are separated by a septum. And finally, these basidiomycotum uh, members are also called the club-like fungi because of that basidium. That basidium has a club-like structure. Lastly, what I'd like to leave with you is that I'd like to mention that many of these fungi in the basidiomycota have a dimorphic type of lifestyle. That means that most of the time they do form these multicellular uh, mycelium type structures, but they're occasionally under certain environmental conditions, they can form a single cell fungi, otherwise known as yeast. Most of these dimorphic basidiomycota are pathogenic to plants and animals. So when we find them out in the environment, they are multicellular, but when they enter their host or enter a plant or an animal, they do become single cells. And infection is very closely linked to this dimorphic type of lifestyle. So this ends the lecture on basidiomycota. Thank you for listening.